Hi everyone, Chunks of Earth here. How are you? I'm okay. Um, as we go into this election cycle, there are only 30 days left, 30 couple days left before the November 2012 presidential election, but we'll also be voting on other things, individual amendments for states, various judges, Congress people, representatives, um, things like that. So again, I strongly urge you to review your ballot, which you can find online for your specific location and see what is involved there and look up the records of these people. And if you're not familiar with them, take a few moments. You, you got the internet. There's no excuse to walk into a voting booth and not know anything about anybody else but the president and vice president of the party of your choice. Because the people in the lower positions that you're voting for contribute to what the president and vice president decide on and have to negotiate with. So if you want good public policy, you need good people to be in Congress and not talk about nonsense, which is what the Tea Party showed up and what do they talk about? Abortion, creationism in schools. None of those create jobs, none. So they were brought in to fix the economy and they hurt the economy by creating lawsuits, uh, by refusing to do what, what their jobs were supposed to be and being sued by the government, suing the government. There goes your tax money. The tax money is spent for roads, bridges, up, upkeep, police, fire, teachers, all these things that you need is being spent in the courtroom fighting the people that you elected to, to have your best interest in mind. Anyway, with that being said, I want to throw out something uh, for you to consider because it's 2012. In 2005, I was making 5% interest on a certificate of deposit in the bank. The economy was starting to go downhill through the policies of George Bush and previous presidents, all the way from Reagan, that started this slide. But basically, the, the unmitigated disaster that was George Bush, and everybody agreed was a disaster because they don't talk about him anymore. The Dow was at 8,000. Now it's the highest it's been. It's over 13,000, 13,500. Um, jobs are slowly coming back. So I don't want you to forget something, and I'm going to, to reiterate why we voted the way we did in 2008, because a lot of people have forgotten, based on corruption of the corporate media on both sides, that wants you to forget, and funny how people really do forget what happened just a few years ago, a decade ago. Do you realize 9-11? 2001, it's 11 years ago, and we're still at war, longest in history, longest in American history, we're still at war. Republicans want to fight Iran now. They want to go to war with Iran. Iran's not a threat. China's a threat, and they're our friends. Iran's not a threat, but they're telling you they are. All right, our problem is the American economy is lagging. There's no jobs, and we have a very dim future. People are upset. The reasons, if I remember correctly, we borrowed trillions of dollars from China for wars we fought in the Middle East, and we're still fighting. We have large corporations that pay little or no taxes, such as GE. Um, the oil companies get subsidies. They no longer pay taxes. They get paid revenue to continue oil. Uh, we, we have the, the largest corporations are not contributing to the economy. We're paying them in most cases. The deregulation led to the Wall Street crash. <clears throat> that deregulation began a long time ago in Reagan's era that I remember. And was followed up in Bush 1, followed up by Clinton, followed up by Bush 2. And it crashed. It can only go so far before it crashes. And it did. Deregulation led to that crash because people were not being monitored there was no oversight and they took big big risks you paid for it 
Now, the Wall Street crash led to millions of people losing their jobs, their retirement, their investments, their businesses, and their homes. Don't you remember that? Millions of people out of work, millions of homes going into foreclosure, Florida and Nevada leading the country in the amount of foreclosures, the amount of empty homes. People left, just walked away because it was easier for them to walk away than it was to stay in a house that was so far upside down when this housing bubble burst. Now, the loss of people's retirement that was lost in Ponzi schemes and the Wall Street crash, people have no more retirement. Well, you pay taxes on that. And your ability to get money out of retirement allows you to, to support the economy. So the loss of retirement lowered tax revenue. The loss of investments, when you lost your money in those investments that Wall Street busted on and went bankrupt. You don't get to pay taxes on investments that don't exist. Lower tax revenue. Loss of jobs. You used to pay taxes. State tax, some places. Federal income tax. No jobs. No income tax being paid. The loss of homes. All those foreclosures. Now you're not paying property tax. All those go local governments are not getting the income they used to to help maintain the system. No more taxes. No more money. They're shutting down services. They're not hiring police officers. They're, they're downsizing their fire department, their paramedics, the teachers. Lower property values also lead to lower tax revenue. For instance, our house was worth about a quarter of a million dollars. It went down to 170,000 in the worst part, and now it's back up to around 190,000. We're upside down. We've lost a lot of money in our property values because of the Wall Street crash, the housing bubble, and the subs subsequent crisis. So now the conclusion, is not enough revenue is coming into government to effectively operate at a, pre a level that was pre-2005. Um, and I, I must add a caveat that we also ship jobs overseas. So there were fewer jobs available for us to have to pay taxes on to support the government. So that's also what led to businesses closing and the, the crash, people unable to pick themselves up and get, get back into the workforce. Um, so not enough revenue. That's why they're trying to shrink government because there's no tax money being paid. And the reason is their fault. So the solutions, this is what this is what the solutions that are being offered. You guess which party. Lower corporate taxes. No new tax revenue. Deregulate Wall Street further. This will raise artificial prices on commodities and such, generating more tax revenue from people who don't have enough money to live. So if you can't afford to pay taxes, Deregulating Wall Street will artificially raise prices on things you can't already pay taxes on. I don't think you're going to get much revenue from that. Since there's no money to, left to invest in jobs, unemployment remains high. You said it's 7.8, but the Republicans are fighting that. Uh, banks were bailed out, but they're still not lending. And now banks are paying 0.01% interest. From that 5% I was getting seven years ago, 0.1 to 0.01 interest. Doesn't make any sense to put money in banks, but you're paying up to 30%, easily between 10% and 30% interest on your credit cards. And I'm paying about 5% on our, well, 4.75% on our loan for the house. So the banks are making a ton of money. The credit card companies are making a ton of money in interest rates, but they're paying nothing for you to invest in them. This also decreases tax revenue. They want to lower the minimum wage, uh, which will result in more jobs and more tax revenue, but the people will be in poverty, so they won't be able to, to survive on food and, and consumer goods that just allow them to survive. The workforce in poverty will also result in costing the government 
uh, in food stamps and welfare. Those numbers have gone up because more and more people were being put out of work, so they had to find some way of surviving, and that's what food stamps and welfare is for. So the claim that there's so many people on welfare is a fault of the current administration is, is I would consider, at least 90% hysterics. It's not true. It's just absolutely not true. But nobody really cares about the truth. Truth hurts. I want to feel good. I'm going to hate that guy, even though he doesn't deserve it. Uh, they're also trying to lower the minimum wage on people under 18 in certain positions. Outback Steakhouse has brought this up in their corporation. They're also trying to remove child labor laws so they can put more people back to work for lower price and also downsize people that have had jobs for a while that are making more money. You can get rid of them now because you can have a kid do their work. And we don't care about longevity or, or experience or knowledge or that. Now you can be replaced. Doesn't that sound a lot like China? Uh, okay. People are no longer retiring. They're staying in the jobs that they can stay in. And they're not allowing the next generation to take over. And this also results in higher unemployment and no new tax revenue. They're trying to defund Medicare and Medicaid. That will raise the revenue by not helping seniors, children, the poor, sick, they're going to defund Planned Parenthood. That'll raise a little bit of money, but the result of no abortions and no Planned Parenthood and no family planning, no access to contraception, will lead to higher health risks, will, uh, will lead to a great number of unwanted children, abused children, and you're going to see an increase in costs, whether it be through food stamps and welfare, or you're going to see it in emergency room visits. And, and all this is going to be spread out over the public. So they're, they're making it look like they're cutting costs in front of you, but you're paying for it exponentially later on. There's no new revenue created by that. Uh, more solutions. You want to shrink government so that the lower tax revenue will still support its most important parts. All right, I'm with you. How are we going to shrink government? We're going to cut defense? You know, we're going to we're going to not bully a lot of people around the world because we're spending 20% of our budget on that. We could use some money from there. Let's see. Abolish the EPA. All right. The Environmental Protection Agency, which is there to protect us from people that are not honorable, that try to get away with things and uh, don't have a problem with poisoning people over profit and destroying the landscape and the water, the air. The, uh, that's what the EPA is there for. We'll get rid of them. Well, that will save a little money, because the government will have to close them down, but it will also put those people out of work. Where are they going to work? Um, it will remove the regulations, and it will sacrifice the environment and the quality of life to pursue revenue. Next step, abolish the Department of Education. Well, that's a good idea, because we're just overflowing with intelligence in this country. Um, as I mentioned, you can look at Representative Braun and Todd Aiken. Those people are brilliant. Michelle Bachman on the Intelligence Committee. Not a day goes by where she doesn't say something profound. So the, abolish the Department of Education. That'll save a little bit of money, but you're going to put people out of work. And you'll give unregulated and unmonitored, unregulated and unmonitored choice of what the citizens learn. So now we have no standard to be well-rounded in society and begin to contribute and have the skills needed to to help, to contribute to society. Now, you, you teach your kid whatever you want, wherever you want, however you want, why ever you want. Does anybody see anything wrong with that? Long term? This is all about money. Um, okay. The goal is to have a large ignorant, fearful, confused workforce that will be easier to control and less likely to make demands of fairness. This will also create chaos and hysteria while people have conflicting ideas of what is fact, what is knowledge, what is truth, what works, 
So we'll stop paying attention to what government's doing and fight amongst ourselves for survival. And finally, let's increase defense spending, which we have to borrow from China to fight Arab countries. Well, I want you to think about that when you go to the polls, because there's only one party that has this idea in mind as a path to success. I think you can guess who that is. I'm Chunks of Earth, and so are you. The rest of, the, the rest of us here in the U.S. are counting on you to get off your ass and go vote. Because if you don't, idiocracy awaits us. Do your part. Thank you for watching.